Some accidents are so horrific, not only can you not look away, you have to come back just because of how horrible things turn out to be. I feel like this when it comes to Intel's Arc GPUs. We discussed the failure of the Arc A380 a while back in a video where I mainly focused on the smaller of the two Arc chips, the ACM G11. Back then I talked about how I think the larger of the two chips probably won't fare any better. And oh boy was I right. Not only does the larger ACM G10 chip not fare any better, I'd even argue it's actually worse than its little brother. So for this video we will take a closer look at Intel's top of the line Alchemist GPU and try to figure out if there are any redeeming qualities left. Last week we finally got independent benchmarks of Intel's ARC A770 and A750 GPUs, which are launching at $329 and $289 respectively. Intel's marketing had a single target, NVIDIA's RTX 3060. I thought it was quite interesting that Intel completely ignored AMD, which currently offers the best price to performance ratio in the entry and mainstream market. Especially since Intel promised to compete on price. But looking at the reviews, it quickly became obvious why Intel could only focus on the Arctic 3060, and even there, it doesn't look very favorably for the new kit in town. In 4040p, the new Intel GPUs have their best showing, with the 8750 a little bit below the 3060 and 6600 XT, and the A770 a little bit above. In lower resolutions, the horrible Intel driver overhead becomes apparent, which means that in 1080p, both ARC GPUs fall even behind the RX 6600 and in 720p the RTX 3050 is closer than the 3060. And as with the smaller A380, these numbers are only when we look at the average FPS, because frame times and minimum FPS are looking even worse for Intel. Though on a positive note, the drivers seem a lot more stable now with less crashing and more supported games. So performance is far from stellar and Intel claims of beating the RTX 3060 is only true for the A770 and only in 1440p average FPS. And we are not even taking into account the overall inferior drivers in this comparison. Looking at the power consumption, it gets even worse for Intel. Because both the A770 and A750 consume about 30% more energy than A3060 and compared to the 6600 XT from AMD, Intel's new cards consume a crazy 50 to 60% more. To put this into perspective, Intel's top Arc Alchemist GPUs are consuming more than an RTX 3070 or RX 6800 while competing with a 3060 or 6600 XT at best. For me, this fact is even worse than the lackluster performance and in my opinion basically proves that there must be some kind of major design flaw within Intel's Alchemist architecture or drivers. Both AMD's Navi 23 and Nvidia's GA106 use inferior process nodes, yet Intel's performance to watt ratio is so far behind that anything else besides a design flaw seems unlikely. And the high power draw continues at idle, where Arc GPUs use 30 to 40 watts more than the competition. We are talking about a 942% increase in idle power draw over the 6600 XT. This is beyond bonkers. Let's hope that Intel finds some kind of driver fix or workaround, otherwise you can start using your computer as a heater even at idle. But I don't want to dwell on performance and power draw too much. There are plenty of other videos out there going into much more detail. Let's take a look at the actual chip behind the A770 and A750. On paper, Intel's larger chip of the Alchemist family looks like a competitive current chain upper mid-range to high-end GPU. The chip, also called DG2512, offers 512 shader engines with a total of 4096 shader cores clocked at speeds above 2 GHz. A 256-bit memory interface with up to 16GB of fast GDDR6 memory, a modern PCI Express 4 connection and a TDP of up to 225 watts. These specs are also represented in the transistor count and die size of the chip. With 21.7 billion transistors, on a 406mm square die produced in TSMC's N6 process node. Nothing out of the ordinary at first, but when we compare the specs to those of the competition, Intel's big problem becomes apparent. Nvidia's RTX 3060 is based on the GA106 die, which is an Ampere generation chip launched in early 2021. It sports 12 billion transistors on a 276mm square die produced in Samsung's 8nm process. Can you spot the difference? The same transistor and die size disconnect, and calling it a disconnect is flattering, 
is visible when we look at the RX 6600 XT, which is based on AMD's Navi 23 die with 11 billion transistors on a 237mm squared die produced in TSMC N7 node. Comparing these GPUs at a die level reveals a much larger problem than if we just compare the GPUs based on performance, power draw and MSRP alone. On the surface the A770 for example does look somewhat competitive. In 1440p it beats the 3060 and 6600 XT on average and while it does come with a higher power draw, a lot of consumers don't mind if the price to performance ratio is acceptable. But by comparing the stats of the chips itself, we can see that Intel's ARC GPUs were not meant to compete with NVIDIA's and AMD's entry to mainstream level GPUs. Intel was clearly targeting the high-end RTX 3070 to RX 6800. But something went horribly wrong. There is no other way to explain how Navi 23 with just 11 billion transistors can compete and even outperform Intel's ACM G10 with literally twice the amount of transistors. With the smaller ACM G11, we could explain parts of the larger transistor budget with the improved media engine and encoding functions. But on larger chips, these parts are way less impactful overall. Again, we're talking about two times the amount of transistors for similar to worse performance levels. This isn't just missing the target, this is not even competing in the same sport. To further amplify my points, let's take a look at the higher end chips from Nvidia and AMD. GA104, which powers GPUs up to the 3070 Ti, still has less transistors than Intel's ACM G10. And even on the older Samsung 8 nanometer node, GA104 is still smaller at 392mm squared. With the same 256 bit interface and only 8GB of GDDR6, a RTX 3070 is much cheaper to produce than a A770. The same goes for AMD's Navi 22 with its 17.2 billion transistors on a 335mm squared die in TSMC's N7 now. A RX 6700 XT is also way cheaper to produce than Intel's ARC A770. Smaller die, older process node, smaller memory interface and less memory capacity. And at the same time it uses less power and performance is about 30% higher. And so far we are only talking about Nvidia's and AMD's current gen offerings, which are close to become last gen, as Ada Lovelace and Arden A3 are just around the corner. Heck, Ada Lovelace just launched today. Both the AD104 chip, which is used for the 12GB4080, and the AD103 chip, which is used for the 16GB4080, have a smaller die size than Intel's A770. Yes, they are based on a much newer 4 nanometer node, but they are still smaller, and I'm sure I don't have to begin comparing their performance. How do you think AMD's Navi 33 will compete with the A770 early next year? We know Navi 33 will use the same TSMC N6 node as Alchemist, but only have a 203mm squared die. That's literally half the die size. Like you can produce two Navi 33 chips for every ACM G10. And if you take the better yields for smaller chips into account, the difference is even bigger. How is Intel supposed to compete against that? A Navi 33 based GPU with half the die size and better yields, half the memory interface and half the memory capacity at a much lower TDP will be so much cheaper to produce and it will run circles around the A770. I know Intel went on a PR tour across YouTube promising to improve their drivers and compete on price, but they can't. Intel cannot compete on price without running their whole consumer GPU operation at a huge loss for the foreseeable future. The moment I realized this fact, I immediately understood why all these rumors about Intel potentially shutting down their ARC GPUs started over the past month. If Intel was doing amazing in all other areas, they might be able to support their GPU adventures long enough to develop a competitive product. But in the current market, it's just not possible. Intel is already losing money. They can't afford to run their GPU operation at a loss. I think Intel has no other choice than to stop their consumer GPU program. Otherwise, they will bleed more money than they can afford. Don't get me wrong, that's not what I want. We need a third competitor in the GPU space. But I just don't see how Intel can turn their AXG department around over the next two years. Even if Battlemage would be 50% better and launch in six months from now, it would still lag behind even current gen GPUs from the competition. I don't know how far along Battlemage is, I wouldn't be surprised if you won't see any battle-made GPUs outside of integrated graphics. I think Intel is just one more bad earnings call away from calling it quits with their consumer GPUs. That's the sad reality. 
if we take the cold hard silicon facts into account. And all the redeeming qualities of the smaller A380 are basically absent here. For an entry level multimedia card, AV1 encode might be an argument, but not for a more capable gaming GPU. Plus, Nvidia's ADA GPUs already come with dual AV1 encoders, so Intel's exclusivity lasted only a few weeks. I really wish I had more positive things to say. If you watch my videos, you know that I'm always trying to find the redeeming qualities of any product. But Intel's Alchemist GPUs just don't have any. It's quite literally too big, too power hungry, and the performance is 3 levels below where it should be. I'm certain Intel tried to target the upper mid-range to lower high-end market of the RTX 3070 and RX 1600. We can see that by looking at how many transistors they spent on the ACM G10 die. But something went horribly wrong and the performance is so much below where Intel expected it to be that it's literally dead on arrival. Intel cannot compete on performance, they can't compete on efficiency and they sure as hell cannot compete on price. The 329 MSRP for the A770 is a death sentence for such an expensive chip. And with that I just found a single redeeming quality of ARC. Nowhere else can you get that many transistors and that much 6 nanometer silicon for this cheap. If only it did anything else besides being large and power hungry. If I'm putting on my pink sunglasses and theorize that Intel might have found a specific design flaw that limits alchemists and they are able to produce battle mage with two times the performance per transistor, plus get the driver up to speed over the next few months. I can see a possible path for the future with a discrete ARC GPU, but there is so much hopium involved that I can't support this theory in good faith. Now I would like to get your input. Do you have any hope for the future of Intel's consumer GPUs? Do you think we will see discrete battle mage GPUs or will Intel call it quicks in the next few months? Leave a comment down below. I hope you found this video interesting and see you in the next one.